you think Common Ground is worth a buck, consider leaving a tip at lptv.org. Lakeland Public Television presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. My name is Sharon Day, uh, Nagamo Maingan in Dishnagaz in Ojibwe. N Nagamo Maingan means singing wolf. All of my life, I have spent resisting something. I was born an Ojibwe woman. I'm a two-spirit lesbian woman. And so all of my life, I have spent um, resisting racism and resisting uh, oppression to indigenous people, sexism, um, homophobia and the wars. So all my life, you know, I've spent like resisting these things. And the thing that I learned on the walk is that, you know, the walk is about uh, moving towards something, moving towards uh, love and, and healing. And I believe that everybody that walked with us felt that. And uh, the journey, of course, was the Mississippi River Water Walk. Uh, we began on March 1st and we arrived just north of Venice, a place called Fort Jackson, uh, Louisiana, on May 3rd. Well, I had walked, carried the water on the Mother Earth Water Walk in 2011 from Gulfport, Mississippi to Ashton, Wisconsin. And during that walk, you know, we sort of uh, walked along the Mississippi a bit in Missouri and Iowa. And I live a block from the Mississippi River in St. Paul. And I cross the river, um, several times a day to and from work. So the Mississippi is in my, my heart. And when I seen uh, some of the conditions um, during the flooding of the spring of 2011, when I finished that walk, you know, I thought to myself, well, what can I do next? And uh, one of the walkers had said, I think we should walk the Mississippi. And I looked on our Eagle Feather staff and I had carved the Mississippi on the staff. And so, of course, that made perfect sense. Uh, we took a year and a half to do the organizing and uh, then we proceeded to carry the water from the headwaters where it's pure and clean all the way to the Gulf in uh, Louisiana where the water empties into the ocean and where there are huge uh, dead zones this year. But we wanted to give the river a taste of herself, a taste of how she started out so pure and clean to that place where all the oxygen has been depleted and tell her this is how you started off pure and clean. This is how we wish for you to be again. And um, for her to remember that at one time she uh, is pure and clean at the source. Well, um, when we began on March 1st, it was a cold, crisp day here in Minnesota. And uh, when we gathered the water from uh, the Mississippi, we had a water ceremony. As we put a little bit in a little tiny copper cup and uh, passed it around, the water was freezing on the lip of the cup. And when we poured a little bit on that little boy water drum, we had the water immediately crystallized. And as we walked, when you looked in that copper vessel, the water was freezing in a swirling kind of motion. So when you looked down into the vessel, you could see it, you know, the circular um, way that it was freezing. The Mississippi River is the second most polluted water in the United States and also one of the most polluted rivers in the world. And uh, what we hope to do is to take some of that pure, clean water from the headwaters where uh, the water is still clean and um, probably you could drink it there. 
um, and take it all the way down to where it empties into the Gulf, where the water is so depleted of oxygen that there are huge dead zones there. So we want to uh, give the river a taste of how it began and perhaps how it can be again. Hi, my name is Dion. I came on this water walk, tried to support my grandmother, Shande, help the river out as much as possible, stop the pollution. I would like to see for there to be less pollution. Also for there to be more supporters. I think it just makes it that much easier for the water to get healed, basically. I think young people could become involved in environmental activities, just helping out more, giving a hand, not, not littering, uh, you know what I'm saying, just not polluting in general, just trying to help out keep the earth clean. And that's really all it takes from all of us. Each of us can do something. Each of us can do one thing. If, and if each of us do one thing differently, you know, we can make some changes. Conserve, and uh, I think, is the first thing. And secondly, um, stop some of these practices of dumping chemicals into the river. So really, we want to talk about conservation. We want to talk about um, ending um, the pollution and, um, and really, you know, having a different view of the water, that the water is one of, um, it's a resource that is not infinite. You know, it, it, the, it, and none of us can live without water and we really have to begin to change our practices. There have been other water walks um, previously going back to uh, 2002. Joseph uh, Mendamin has organized many walks around the Great Lakes, the St. Lawrence Seaway. And two years ago, we had a uh, Mother Earth water walk where we brought water from the four oceans, uh, the east, the south, the west, and the north, to um, the heart of Turtle Island that we call um, Lake Superior, and we brought those four waters from the oceans. And uh, we, as Josephine said, uh, we poured them together into Lake Superior where they would converse with each other um, and make their way back home. But really to pray for the water, to raise awareness about the water. Um, you know, we're made of water, we are of the water, and we need to do something to you know, save this most precious uh, resource that is being um, attacked uh, at all kinds of levels. You know, uh, last spring there was an article in the uh, St. Paul paper that said, and the farmers, the cities, um, and the corporations, uh, 3M, uh, they were all arguing about who were the biggest polluters of the Mississippi River. Um, not what can we do to clean her, but you know who's done the most damage. And so we really want to help move that um, conversation to um, one of uh, what are some of the solutions. That relationship reconnecting to the water, reconnecting to, um, you know, when you offer your Sema every day and you have a little circle and you talk about what's on your mind, what's in your heart, and you sing and then you proceed all day in ceremony, you find that you have the capacity for this immense love. And that love is the healing grace. Love is a healing grace. And so everybody that walked with us, I believe, felt that at some point. And of course, the more you walked, the greater that feeling grew. It was beautiful the first couple of days. And then as we walked into Grand Rapids, we had a, the wind coming from the east that was blowing directly in our face. And, uh, <laughs> and it was going to storm that night. There was going to be a blizzard. So I remember calling Josephine Mendamin and saying, could you put some petitions out to tell Kiwi Noden to uh, blow softly on us? And uh, she said, I will immediately. In the morning we got up and it had been about two feet of snow. And uh, so we had a pipe ceremony, and then we began our journey. And that day was one of the most beautiful days of the walk because, you know, the snow was coming down, and there were hardly any cars on the road south of Grand Rapids because, you know, it was a blizzard, right? But we were able to walk, and we walked about um, 28 miles that day, you know, heading south, and it was, it was very beautiful. And so we walked through probably about four major snowstorms in Minnesota and northern Iowa. And uh, you know, we got to the Twin Cities. Of course, there were many people, and we had our first event there, educational event, and 
then Anya Dance Theater came and danced for us. And, you know, it was people, they met us at the Stone Arch Bridge crossing the river. And it was, it was kind of a cool, uh, windy day there, too. And, uh, but it was very beautiful to have that kind of support coming from our, um, you know, the place that I live. And uh, we headed on south, and um, we didn't actually get warm weather until southern Iowa um, crossed over and uh, Keokuk into uh, Illinois there and then on down to St. Louis. We did stop in Iowa at the Effigy Bear Mounds and we had a beautiful pipe ceremony up at a place called Pikes Peak and when you overlook um, Pikes Peak you see the confluence of the Mississippi and the uh, Wisconsin River. And um, when, you know we're standing there on that bluff looking down at the river and it was like that affirmation of this is why we're walking. And then we headed on down and we got to St. Louis and uh, to Cahokio and um, we had a ceremony there. We walked up um, 100 steps up to the top of Monk's Mound and we laid out all the gifts we had been given, the medicines people had given us already along the way and our sacred foods. And we had a tobacco ceremony, water ceremony, and we had the food we shared with all the people that were there. And of course, there was a beautiful picture that was taken of uh, four of us at the top of uh, Monk's Mound. And that picture has been widely distributed, but it was a very uh, peaceful day. And we had cleaned our copper vessel the night before. So we actually poured some of the Mississippi water from the source we had carried with us. And we gave everybody a sip of that water there in St. Louis. And uh, then we proceeded on our way. You know, so I was a little lonely in southern uh, Missouri because, you know, there's not that many people. And so mostly it was um, six of us, four women and two men. But we made it through and uh, in Arkansas, we uh, met a couple old friends and they walked with us to Memphis. And Memphis, there was another large gathering of local native people and community people. And uh, there were some Mexica dancers there. and. Uh, we had a wonderful um, event there and we were presented with some wonderful gifts from the native people there in, in, in Memphis and then we proceeded on our way again and uh, we were joined by some of the women from Memphis and then on down to um, Baton Rouge. The day before we got to Baton Rouge, I remember it being uh, such a beautiful, beautiful day. You know, all the uh, trees were blooming, the flowers were blooming. And so the air was like filled with the nectar of all of these beautiful flowers and trees that were blooming. So in uh, Baton Rouge, there was an event there and uh, it, it, you know, we received some gifts and we shared with people and we shared um, stories with them and listened to their stories. And then the next day we got into Baton Rouge and then on our way out of Baton Rouge, everything changed. No more sweet smells of the flowers and the trees. From then on to New Orleans, all you could smell is oil because there are refinery after refinery after refinery from between Baton Rouge to New Orleans and they call it the Cancer Alley. And then uh, we hit the levee system there in New Orleans and from there the river is a levee that flows along the river and uh, we probably could have released our water there any place because there's no place else for the water to go except out to the mouth. And so when you, from New Orleans to um, the actual mouth of the river is 90 miles. But we proceeded on down and we had dinner with the Huma uh, tribal people there when we got to New Orleans. And through them, we were able to locate some indigenous people who lived along the Gulf and they actually found um, the site where we would release the water, which is a place called Fort Jackson. So from New Orleans and south, you have this levee system and you have mostly like more oil refineries. You see uh, at one po point there was like this mountain of, I thought it was coal, you know, about three stories high. And, um, but later I found out that that's not coal because what would coal be doing there, right? Coal doesn't come from, you know, New Orleans. And um, what it was was um, petro byproducts of the oil that they dig in the Gulf. And so you have the Mississippi River and this big um, levee system. And then off of that, you have these canals that are dug by the oil companies to get their barges and boats in with the oil. And then, you know, it's refined there and, and you have these big, huge piles of, of oil and petro byproducts. And, um, and so when we got to um, Fort Jackson, which was 78 miles south of um, New Orleans, then we had a beautiful ceremony. 
And um, when we got there, we offered the water that we were carrying to the river. And on the fourth offer, uh, I poured it into the river. And I guess there had probably been a ship going by that I didn't see, but the moment I poured the water into the river, there was a wave that came and it sort of lapped over our, our ankles and, and then another wave and another wave and the last wave was near our knees and um, it was like being kissed by the river. And uh, we had a beautiful ceremony there and, um, and, and then we had our food bundle that went into the river and again, when we offered that to the river, you know, the river responded. So there were, you know, always these magical things that were that happening. And when you're in ceremony every day for 65 days, you know, you are so open to um, the spirit and um, the spirit is open to you. So it was beautiful. Once we came back from the south, one of the things that for those of us who were the sort of core walkers, that five, six people who walked every day, um, we all um, missed um, each other. We missed the water, we missed the river. And uh, so what I proposed to a number of the women all along up and down the Mississippi was that every Sunday morning um, that we all go to church at the river. And that we have water ceremony, and we have tobacco ceremony, water ceremony, and we sing to the river, and that we continue to do this. And so even though the physical act of the walk has ended, our work has just begun. And so I asked various women along the river, you know, I take care of it in St. Paul, Patty Jo here in Grand Rapids. Kathy Edwards at La Crosse, and you know, there's five or six women in uh, St. Louis, and they meet at Grafton, and um, and then in Memphis, I asked uh, Lee Taylor and um, Eileen and those women there to continue, and in Baton Rouge, uh, Anna, and so all up and down the river every Sunday morning, you know, we hold these water ceremonies as well as participate in other events in the community, but it's a way to continue to sing to the river, you know, to offer her our love and gratitude and respect. And, um, and we'll continue to do that. Well, those of you who are walking, think of, you, think of the water as you walk and, and um, everyone that would like can um, take a turn uh, holding the nibi. And I'm, I'm going to sing another water song on the bridge. And Tannis, you can, if you want to join me, you, you can. Okay. <laughs> You're learning it. Um, and the, Sounds the good. song okay. that we're going to sing um, has a visualization that goes with it that all waters will be clean again. All waters will be clear again because all waters are sacred and we have to be responsible. Um, so visualize all waters on earth that they be clear again. Bonjour. No deni quen in dishna kas gaga ju anak din donjaba nigignin do dame. In English, my name is Patty Urban. I am from Grand Rapids here and I am Otter Clan. And we come here every Sunday morning to thank the water, to sing to the water, to honor the water. 
as many people all along the Mississippi and other lake shores do every Sunday. Here we sing three songs and they each have a slightly different meaning. One is very simple in Ojibwe. It, it translates to water, we love you, we thank you, and we respect you. And another one of the songs just affirms that the water is our home and that the water is our Mother Earth's blood. And we honor that. And the third song, is more like a meditation. When we sing it, we visualize that all waters on earth are clean and pure, and that everyone on our Earth Mother has access to fresh, clean, healthy water. So that's what we visualize as we sing. We'll also walk the Ohio River, and the Ohio River is the most polluted river in the United States. So that will be our next water walk. Um, in the Mother Earth Water Walk, there were 164 women and men who walked with me at some point. In the uh, 2013 Mississippi River Water Walk, um, I haven't counted yet, but I'm sure there were well over two or 300 people that walked with us at some point along the way. And uh, we got a little better with the technology and the planning, so we have um, over 4,000 um, Facebook friends. So if people want to become involved, they can go to Facebook and search for the Mississippi River Water Walk 2013. And eventually that will become the Ohio uh, River Water Walk. People can stay informed through that and also not only informed of the walks, but there are other walks that are happening around the country right now and in Canada, and they can participate in those. or other kinds of actions, um, you know, that are peaceful and loving um, in the meantime. We always need all kinds of supporters. Um, the way that we raised the money for the Mississippi River Water Walk was um, a series of dinner parties that friends had. That was where the bulk of the support came from. And so people can participate by, if they can't walk, by hosting um, dinners and they can walk with us. So people should go to the Mississippi uh, River uh, Water Walk 2013 and um, become a member of that. You know, one of the things that we've asked people to do is whether you can walk for the water or we ask people to conserve and, and, and those things. But one thing that everybody can do every day is to make an offering to the water. Uh, whether that's um, you're near whatever water you're near, whether it's a stream or a creek or a lake, go to that water or simply your water that comes out of the tap. Look at it, say, water, I love you. Water, I thank you. And water, I respect you. And um, in doing that, you know, that creates that vibration. We need to, we ourselves are, when we're babies, we're 80% water. As we age, we we lose some of our water and so by the time you're like 62 years old like me you're only about 60 percent water so you have to drink water and we have to like sing to ourselves and sing to the water in our own body because that's how we stay healthy and uh, you know our bodies are merely the vessel that holds us in this realm and so we want to take care of those vessels the best way we can and that is by singing to the water praying to the water and the water is a spirit and we are spirit beings that are in this physical realm for a short period of time. So I ask everybody to do that, whether you can walk or whatever else you can do, but do that if you do one thing. Miigwech. 
If you have an idea for a common ground piece that pertains to North Central Minnesota, email us at legacy at lptv.org or call us 218-333-3022. To view any episode of Common Ground online, visit us at lptv.org. To order individual segments or entire episodes of Common Ground, please call 218-333-3020. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people on the 4th of November, 2008.